Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Just picked up uh, this box of goodies from the airport. They are from my good friend Eric at Fashion 8. Fascination Herps. Uh, I know Eric for quite a while. He, he used to be one of the senior herp keepers at the Cincinnati Zoo. And since Ohio passed those draconian laws on private uh, animal keeping, yeah, exotic animal keeping, after that whack job released his lions, tigers, and everything else into the community. Um, he left the zoo and he and his partner, another keeper, uh, started their own business uh, down in Texas where the uh, venomous keeping is, is permitted. Of course, we will recycle all this and send animals out as required. This is a young female Chinese red spot who will hopefully grow up and uh, soon enough, and I can breed with the male. That's in the uh, cage over there. Isn't she lovely? Very cryptic uh, snakes. Captive born animal. And then we have some additional Lapsoidea sundavali, the uh, African garter snake. These are very cool little lapids. They're they're not medically significant, uh, however, we never underestimate venom, uh, so we'll be careful with those. So, uh, let me get rid of the crate, and we'll come back and we'll unpack everybody uh, the rest of the way. So, here's the Chinese red spot, Protobothrops geridoni xanthomelis. And in a moment, I'll uh, insert uh, uh, what the adult form looks like. This one still has the juvenile colors. Adult form. This is a male that was born here in 2007. Actually, not here in my other lair. Uh, it's the only one I have left from uh, uh, that group that was born uh, under my care. And I've searched and searched and finally came up with the female. Okay, these are pit vipers. Uh, the bathrops have some pretty nasty venom, uh, mostly hemorrhagic and proteolytic. Uh, plus, as the name implies, protobothrops is uh, they believe that these are the ones that initially came over in the land bridge and went to South America, I think. So we'll gently handle her. Oh, she's a much bigger girl than I thought. So we'll let her uh, uh, go in here and uh, acclimate a bit and stay in quarantine for a little while. Um, Unfortunately, we missed the opportunity to breed uh, this year, so we will uh, 
We'll do that next here. She's heading into her hut, which is all good because we want her to be comfortable. I think uh, we'll give her a nice uh, wet welcome because we know how these tropical snakes don't like. Well, okay, she's not tropical, but she's from, you know, parts of China where it gets quite a bit of rain, so. Uh, we'll let her uh, chill out, so to speak, and acclimate, and get her on food, and uh, we'll take it from there. So again, uh, uh, the red spot pit viper. We've had these this species before. As I ex mentioned earlier, it's Elapsoidea, which is the genus of elapids in Africa, which are known as the garter snakes. <laughs> um, you know, not much is known about their venom, um, but uh, they're a very cool species. Hi there. They're semi-fossorial, which means that they spend a lot of time burrowing They'll, of course, eat other snakes, lizards, probably, you know, uh, in addition to, to small rodents. You can see, you know, by the size of their head, they're really not geared towards, uh, uh, you know, mammalian prey. Um, but these are three females. They'll be with me for a short time because I promise them, along with a male that a larger male which has previously appeared in videos uh, I promised them females so uh, I like to keep my promises with my zoo friends and customers so uh, I will send these off hello Oh, you want to take that with you, huh? Hi huh? hey there. Hi hey there. Why don't you go in and uh, chill out? And investigate your quarters. You know, I'm going to probably put sticks under these because uh, I've learned from experience you never trust snakes to stay where you put them. <laughs> and you can see uh, all these Russell's Vipers are happy to see me because they know that mm, food could be on the way uh, very soon for them. Except for a pair that are shipping at the end of the week. Uh, uh, they may not get fed uh, until their afternoon home. Okay, relax, relax. Okay, so this is the larger one, so. Uh, she seems a little bit more irritable. So we will not uh, try to have her hang off my fingers and exactly see how potent or not their venom is. Hello. Come on. I bet you can be a, a nice piece of spaghetti uh, on the floor. There you go. Here's a nice place to hide for now. You know, I, I sometimes forget to do things, like take picture of it. She's cute. There you go. I'm just going to put you in here and you can hang out.
that one's got really nice colors. A little bit more pronounced than the others. I don't know if it's uh, something they outgrow. Yeah, that's, that's quite nice. Are you ready to check out your uh, new space for now? I think those uh, five millimeter holes are not big enough. <laughs> I, we hope. I hope. <clears throat> well, <laughs> I guess if you have to have a venomous snake loose in the room uh, by accident, um, that would be my first choice actually <laughs> because their venom is supposed to be relatively mild. Oh, yeah, look who's at the window to say, oh. to say hello. Whoop! Oh. Whoop! I just retracted back into my lair. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, she'll get used to us. I, I should have moved uh, a lot slower. Oh, and one of the Russell's Viper just pooped in our in its nice clean cage. Oh, you... You toad. Why did you do that, huh? Because you cleaned it. I have to make it smell familiar. Oh, <laughs> you... <grr. laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, all right, we'll let those uh, guys uh, get... Uh, get sort of acclimated. I am going to find... Oh, she's up in her tree. She's already exploring. There's the little head. You gonna head back in your cage? I have a brother in your little hut. You're in your cage. Otherwise, I wouldn't be this close. Yeah, she's exploring. Okay, well, that's fine. you do your thing. Come on, help me out. I'm helping you out. Let's not uh, make a, uh, a major battle of this. It's funny, he jerked uh, and whacked his own face. Now I see the tail is moving and agitated. Um, so, yeah, he's not happy. But it was funny, he would, like whacked himself with his own body because he was pissed. All right, all right, you know, figure it out for your own. You know, I spent money to have these sprayers put in the cages to uh, help these guys shed and I have yet to see some real positive results. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he got his head plates and eye caps complete. Uh, 
but he has he's struggling and he you know oh he, he's pissed he's, i keep seeing the tail yes yes he did that and sort of whacked himself in the <laughs> face and then what of course was why did you do that to me no i didn't do it you did it to yourself you toad so yeah we'll let him uh play with that uh uh any rate uh Let's move on to some more interesting things here. Oh, I don't know, an angry mamba is pretty interesting. <laughs> well, look, I've dealt with angry mambas. You weren't even in the room, so yes. don't talk to me about angry mambas. <laughs> uh, so, my friend Dana at uh, Midwest Tongs developed a new... Uh, grabber type tong and we'll explore the differences uh, between this newly developed one if I can ever open the box and the old standard uh, gentle giant so one of the immediate things that this new one is, has, well, he's, he's sort of, uh, it's very well sealed. He, he's tricked it out a bit. Um, certainly, oh my, it's, uh, it would be useful in dark places. course through well, I, I can't undo it right now but you can see that it's laser engraved with uh, the Viper Keeper name uh, now what I'll do is I'll undo the end here so we can actually make it work and then we'll we'll talk about it a little bit more uh, we had a long conversation on the phone one day and he told me that he was making these and the difference is the trigger mechanism is, is milled out of a piece of aluminum and then polished rather than having a, uh, a tool that was cast in aluminum and then cleaned up. Uh, you... Uh, you can't believe, and he was absolutely right. Oh, and okay, he laser engraved the shaft to it. Thank you, Dana. It's just, it's really exactly what you described. You know, I cannot, I cannot put into words, but he's, he's so correct. The amount of pull necessary to actuate it is so slight. You can you can really be as gentle as you want uh, to grab things. Now, you, you know in the lair that um, the only time that I use uh, the Gentle Giants on an actual snake is when they're totally out of control. Uh, when I, I need to control them and traditional methods uh, uh, leaves me vulnerable to take a bite or the snake escaping or something to that effect. Um, it's just something that I don't, uh, I don't generally use. But this is very gentle and very controllable uh, and it has a very nice feel. Plus it's short. I, one of the things with the Gentle Giants is they're, they're quite large but uh, this is amazing. Here, you try uh, pulling the trigger and seeing how gentle that is. Oh my, that is. It's very smooth. Yes, and you know, there's a mechanism in here and uh, uh, it's all, uh, all very delicate. Uh, um, it doesn't take anything at all to move that trigger. This is going to be fun to play with and in, te in test. Um, and we'll see how that all works out. But that's just uh, uh, introducing you and the very nice holder in the flashlight he sent. And another nice thing that he sent was my favorite. I used it all the time, 
it fell out of my pocket and I lost it was uh, this beautiful locking knife sn snake handler Midwest um, just a thing of beauty it's it's very sharp uh, these little guys down here will bite you and I've bled many times <laughs> with the original one that's how come I know they will bite you so um, we will uh, we'll make sure that our fingers don't come in contact with it so that's uh, that's the new goodies uh, uh, that he sent uh, so we'll give this a nice thorough test out and a report on uh, the knife I already know how well it works and it just uh, goes really nice in my pocket and uh, I've avoided uh, turning it into TSA when I, <laughs> I've been at the airports. I've actually take, you know, we have a checklist that we run down before I leave for uh, either out of state or uh, or to the airport that I make sure that I remove uh, uh, these things uh, that, you know, all these fascist states that are around Pennsylvania uh, they don't allow me to carry, uh, uh, you know, knives and weapons and stuff. Uh, um, you don't want to get these confiscated. Nope, don't want to get them confiscated and such. So, uh, we have a checklist that I run down. Okay, so we're going to move on to uh, some other things we need to do here. And uh, Derpy is still glaring at me for touching <laughs> him, so we'll let him... Uh, We'll let him smolder for a while. <laughs>